Welcome to this video. I'm Xenia and I've been with BPI Photonics for three years now, working here as an optical engineer and pursuing my doctoral degree in photonics. It's been a fascinating time and I'd like to share with you an example of what you can do with our software VPI Design Suite. And today's topic is fiber nonlinearity mitigation. Just stay tuned, I promise it's well worth your time. So why talk about fiber nonlinearities? Admittedly, not only because it's the subject matter of my research. It's quite an intriguing topic and many experts nowadays are trying to answer a fundamental question. What is the limit of optical fiber capacity? Let's get into more details now. A fiber consisting of silica has a fundamental nonlinear property, also called the kernel linearities. When the input optical power increases, the light experiences deterministic deformation and the power of the signal is reassembled between different spectral harmonics. When the light is carrying useful data, the signal gets degraded as if it experienced additional noise loading. When the input power is too high, the signal can no longer be received error-free. What a pity! But don't worry! Luckily, in the last decade, several techniques were developed to reverse the signal degradation. One of them is called twin waves. I simply love this technique for the spectacular results it produces. We need two orthogonal polarizations and a symmetric non-dispersion managed link. What is important is that the data in one polarization is a complex conjugate of the data in the other. The nonlinear noise in both polarizations is then anti-correlated. At the receiver, the two polarizations can be superimposed and they cancel the nonlinear effect. Brilliant, isn't it? All theory is grey, my friend, but forever green is the tree of life, as Johann von Goethe, a giant in German literature, so nicely put it. So now let's go and check the setup. Please follow me to optical system demos, characterization, dispersion and care folder, and then open the nonlinear noise constellation schematic. In the upper part you can see the description. Below the schematic you can see the instructions and references. You are going to want to pause this video to get more details. Let's quickly look at the schematic. We have two propagation links single polarization QPSK up and twin waves QPSK down. The first block generates a random bit sequence, which is arranged in one column and mapped into QPSK modulation. Further, dispersion is 50% precompensated to ensure symmetry in the propagation link. The last module before propagation transforms electrical signal into optical. All right. Let's take a look at the link. It consists of 20 loops, each having an ADF amplifier and a 100 km span. How do I know? Double click on any model and you will see the parameters list. For example, here you can see that the fiber is 100 km long. Here that the ADF amplifiers are noiseless. And here we encounter something called global parameters. Just double-click anywhere in the field to see them. They are similar to global variables in programming. As we can see, there are 20 loops here. We are nearly there, pluck up your courage. The receiver restores the polarization, samples the signals at Nyquist rate and compensates for the residual 50% dispersion. Finally, something specific for the twin waves technique is done. The two polarizations are superimposed. The last module calculates the bit error rate and builds the constellation diagram. And as for these two models here, let's switch them off for now. Now we are ready to run the schematic. Depending on your hardware, this might take up to several minutes. There we are. We are now in the analyzer window. Here we see the constellation diagram for both examples single polarization QPSK and twin wave QPSK. Visually, they look pretty similar, but below in the symbol error rate line you could already see the improvement. 
To see the effect in its full glory, let's go back to the schematic and increase the input power. That would increase the nonlinear effects too. Remember, double click on the workspace, we need the parameter output power. For example, we set it up to 3 mW. OK, we run again and we watch what happens. Look at this beauty! The symbol error rate of 10 to the minus 3 can be improved up to 10 to the minus 10 if you just use the twin waves technique. This allows increasing the reach distance dramatically. Also, consider using higher order modulation formats. After all, we want to transmit more data in the same link. Let's wrap up what we've learned today. In this tutorial, we learned to switch models off and on, change the global and local parameters, and we learned a powerful technique to mitigate fiber nonlinearities called twin waves. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. It's only a tip of the iceberg of all the power built into the software. If you find this video helpful, please give us a thumb up. We are happy to receive your feedback. So see you in the next video. Stay tuned. And as we see here in Germany, tschüss!